Hello and welcome. This is Tamara Anderson again from Building Successful Lives Speech and Language Services. I have another special guest in my interview series on diversity, culture, and equity. I have Jason Warner, who currently resides here in Atlanta. He is the CEO and author, speaker, and change agent. He is the chief vision officer and thought leader behind the Own the Vision Academy, an online marketplace where subject matter experts teach in their subject as well as the visionary behind the Own the Vision Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization with the mission to build an economic infrastructure for Black America. He is also a public relations and marketing practitioner by trade. Jason began his career in local government. After his government tenure, Jason worked with top communication agencies in consulting and developing essential marketing branding strategies for some of the world's most prominent corporations, university, professional athletes, and nonprofit organizations. An advocate and purveyor of life learning, Jason has made a mark as guest lecturer at Marquis University on marketing and public relations, crisis communications, brand management, entrepreneurship, and leadership. He has been called upon to lead conversations on race and equity, as well as economic and community empowerment. Jason is the author of the forthcoming book, The Success Equation, and I'm sure we'll be hearing lots more from him in the future. Thank you so much for being here for my audience, which is primarily speech language pathologists, educators in the public and private sector, as well as families. I'm so pleased to have you with me today. Thank, thank you so much for inviting me. This is uh, uh, it's an honor to, uh, to sit with you. Uh, we, we go way back from our roots in Miami, um, and now both in Atlanta. So thank you. Yeah, so we've been in, both been in Atlanta for quite some time, which is kind of unbelievable. I would love for you just to share a little bit about yourself and your professional experience. And then I know I highlighted some, just any one or two more points, and then we'll dive into the question. So um, like, you, like you stated, I'm a, uh, my background's in marketing and public relations with a niche in crisis communication. Uh, and I took that to kind of solve some community problems. Uh, we started the On the Vision Foundation back in 2014, where uh, what we do is we raise money and give it right back into the community. Uh, but we saw a decline in, in folks giving, right? So we decided to launch the On the Vision Academy. And actually, we're in launch week, which we're really excited. It's an online learning marketplace that allows subject matter experts to teach their lived experience. Um, one of the things we say is, would you rather have somebody who's been changing breaks for the past 10 years change your breaks or someone who studied how to change your breaks for the past 10 years? I think we want to stop. So you want somebody who's actually done that. Um, and we've provided a marketplace for those that may not have a degree in that specific area, but they have lived experience. They're those subject matter experts that do it every single day. So we're excited about that. Yeah, wonderful. And we'll delve more into that in a little bit. Why is and why is it important to affirm the cultural identities of Black children? As a speech pathologist, I work with children with various backgrounds here in Atlanta and the Snowball area. But why do you believe it's important to, to affirm their identities? And what do you believe are success keys for Black children, especially our boys, to navigate the public school system, graduate university, and or vocational training? So, you know, that's, that's a great question, right? So when, when you talk about culture and identity, um, it, especially for Black boys and girls. Um, in, in America, there is a lack of cultural identity. Uh, when, when they start school at an early age, their history starts at slavery or post-slavery or we're uh, in Black History Month. So this is that one month that encompasses that, right? But it doesn't tell, tell the true story of their heritage, their greatness, and who they are. Um, you, you, they say we're descendants of slaves. No, we're descendants of kings, queens, astrologists, uh, great inventors, uh, the, the, the mathematicians of the world. I had an opportunity to visit Egypt and, and really see it firsthand of what, where we come from and who we come from. So it's so important because when you don't have an identity or a culture of who you are, you don't know how much you can achieve. The sky is truly the limit when you're exposed to who you are. And I think that's important for Black children to know, you know, our lineage is from Africa, you know, and they, like you said, there's so many civilizations, South Africa, North Africa, East Africa, West Africa, it's such a multifaceted 
um, societies and so forth that were very bright and built all sorts of structures and were leading the world with writing and other forms. And then, you know, we are all of the African diaspora, Black people. They immigrated to the Caribbean like my family, not immigrated, were brought <laughs> and shipped <laughs> against our will and then brought to America here, North America, South America. That is the lineage, but with that, we brought our roots, right? And right. So blended with other cultures, you know? Absolutely. And it's so, it's so important to be able to tell that story so you can have that true sense of self, right? Yeah. Uh, so often when our, our young people are in school, they, they're only taught from a one lens mm -hmm. and one vantage point. And we have an opportunity to share these stories to, to make sure that they can live their full and true selves and, and, and not walk shrunken down, not walk in a sense of less than, but understand that they're, they're, they're great. They come from greatness and they can do great things. And I think it's important for them to learn, because I work with little ones, you know, preschoolers and elementary school age, to walk in boldness, <laughs> be confident in who you are, acknowledge your strengths, acknowledge areas of weaknesses, and you can use your strengths to work on those weak areas and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Wonderful. So what do you see as the success keys for Black boys specifically um, to navigate the public school system? Do you think there's one thing that they should harness, you know, especially elementary school age, if they can just focus on one thing? So I think it's for the parents more than the kids, right? Because the kids are sponges. The, the parents is exposure and access. I say exposure plus access are the keys to success. And if you're not exposed to, it's you never know what you can be or possibly achieve. So um, exposure from the parents, and it's not just where you live. So in this Metro Atlanta area, go out, uh, go travel, go visit different cultures, go experience different things, go learn any and everything that you can but if you're just set, sit, sitting there in your bubble uh you tend to be in a situation where you just one track uh with one lens so exposure is critical and i think community involvement is so important get the boys in sports get the girls in ballet you know boys and girls clubs you know get them connected and if they come from single family homes or different kinds of homes you know just get them in church faith groups different types of organizations to build the community I think it's the public school system, private sector, and then the community to be more of like a family. I think that support system is very important to uplifting the Black community. Absolutely. Yes. How, um, Mr. Warner, how do you believe your background life experiences have shaped your success in navigating the corporate sector? And yeah, we'll start there first. <laughs> so, you know, funny thing is um, as many people will say, you don't look like you're from Miami. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? What, what is, is the that look? <laughs> right, what is the look? Um, you don't sound like you're from Miami. What is the sound, right? Exactly. Um, and I was a fortunate, to, back to your previous question, my parents exposed me to a number of things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, your brother and I played basketball together. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, senior, junior year of high school, uh, the principal announced on the, the air or the intercom in the morning that I was on the cover of the Miami Herald as one of 12 Eagle Scouts. So nobody knew I was a Boy Scout <laughs> the whole time. But I was exposed to so many different things, traveled all across the country, traveled internationally with the Boy Scouts, uh, was able to lead groups that didn't look like me. I was the only Black boy in the troop mm -hmm. and was voted senior leader um, by my peers three years in a row. Um, and, and so being able to be exposed to that, that, that showed me a different world, made, allowed me to navigate not only through uh, corporate America, but just life, because you have a different understanding, because you understand different perspectives. I think that's very important. I take that as planting seeds. As you know, the young people growing up, their parents plant seeds by giving them exposure. And for kids that may not have the parental involvement, that's when the community outreach is so important. So speech therapists, educators, neighbors, and so forth can help bring those kids along, give them the exposure so that they can get involved in different things and being able to relate to people. Miami was a great place to grow up. We got to relate to people from all different walks of life and uh, racial and ethnic backgrounds, which I think is fantastic through different avenues. And what do you believe, Mr. Warner, is a success piece for, um, how, how can some Black men overcome the hurdle of finding steady employment despite unemployment statistics in the black community because sometimes you know you may have all that upgrade upbringing you may have the good training college education but it's all about networking i think and being connected 
because in this society, Black America so, is a very interesting um, thing to navigate in this broader global society. You know, so that's absolutely you have the seeds, and then how do you really make it work? <laughs> So, so part of it is you have to audacity, you have to have audacity to believe you can, right? It, it can't be, oh, there's going to be a roadblock because there's going to be hurdles and roadblocks for everyone. Yes, we have more hurdles, excuse me, roadblocks and hurdles than others do. Mm -hmm. Yet, if you push forward, it's not going to always happen overnight. Right. But you have to be willing to say, you know what, I may do this right now, but this is not my end goal. So you're constantly reinventing yourself, constantly putting yourself in a place that I can do versus, oh, this is going to be a robot. And then also the biggest thing is having a positive atti attitude and mindset when you approach these different things. If you go into the situation saying, well, they're not going to hire me because I'm black. They're not going to allow me to come in there because I'm a six foot six, 200 plus pound man and they fear me. You're not going to get that. But if you have that positive mindset of understanding, I can conquer the world. I can do all of these things. Yes, I may have some roadblocks. Yes, I may have some hiccups, but everyone has hiccups. We have to move forward and we can't take no for an answer. Uh, one of the things a mentor told me was when a door closes, no, it's next opportunity versus no right you don't lose you learn so we have to keep our young boys and girls in that in that mindset of success and moving on to that opportunity not getting stuck in the fact that it didn't happen this time i think that's very important i'm all about positive mindset i say regardless of what is going on every day may not be good but there's something good in every day right absolutely so that mindset is so key and I think the mentorship is also so key to make sure your circle of friends, your circle of people that you're around, they're all on the same page. And not everybody may be at the same level, but you are like minds. I think, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So it's good to surround yourself with like minds. And then just continue, you know, you set goals for yourself. You may need to readjust. You might get knocked down. You just kind of keep pushing forward. And it's about resilience, right? Keep on going. You know, you have strengths. You know, you think you have things to offer the world. You can go to college, vocational school, whatever it is, get the training and then continue to harness those things and build on what you have and continue. I think those are excellent um, words of advice there that lots of families and children can glean from. It's wonderful. What motivated you to start your nonprofit, Own the Vision? I know you touched on it a little bit, but I'd like to take a stand on that and talk some more about the mission of the organization. So the motivation is, and I, I said my background's in PR marketing with a niche in crisis communication. So um, we have in this community have seen the die-ins, the sit-ins, the not anymore, the hashtag, say her name, say his name for years and years and years. And this is not something that's new. We may have seen it more on social media, but it's a rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And one of the things I started looking at um, from a standpoint of community in the just how the United States works. The United States is a capitalistic society. Unfortunately, Black America owns and controls basically nothing. There's not one Fortune 500 company that start, started and founded by a Black person, right? There is, we have literally been in a situation where we came out of slavery and just had to try to figure it out, had to learn how to read, how to learn how to engage in commerce and different things like that. So I said, instead of waiting on a savior, how about we save ourselves? Mm -hmm. We talk about this $1.3 trillion that's, that is spent by black people in this country. Well, what happens if we just donated a dollar, a dollar a month, everyone that looked like us, that's $44 million every single month circulating that we can build that infrastructure, right? Um, Dr. Claude Anderson talks about this in his Powernomics book, um, you have to build that, that four-story building. Well, for us, it's building like the pillars of the house where we invest in real estate and small businesses and nonprofits um, and legal and media so we can tell our story. So that was the idea is not going to anybody else, not waiting on folks to save us um, and raise the money ourselves and give it right back. The United Way had the similar model. Folks donate to the United Way and the United Way gives it back in, in large chunks. Uh, that's our model. Um, and, you know, we, we've had some wins and we're still growing. We're still trying to perfect the model. But again, that's why we shifted to a additional for-profit model where we give not only the people the tools to be able to donate, 
um, but the life lessons that they can share their lived experiences. We talked about mentoring and community. Well, sometimes you can't navigate through corporate America because you don't have someone to guide you and show you the, the tips of the trade. You go to university, it's this is how you do it based on theory. No one tells you how to navigate through the HR manager. No one tells you how to set up your, your with holdings when you set, do your W-2 form or uh, W-9 form, excuse me. Um, no one tells you how to transition from career to career. But if you work with and learn from folks with lived experiences, basically having mentors on demand, um, everyone wins. So the folks who are quote unquote mentors, they get paid for their classes in a passive model. And the folks that are trying to transition, and this is only Vision Academy is for everyone. It's, it's not a gender, it's not a culture, it's not a race specific organization. It's for everybody to own their vision of success. Which is fantastic. And I like what you said that there's different workshop models and stuff that professionals and up and coming professionals can tap into. Is there a, a website that folks can access your information to learn more about the modules or something that's paid or? A abs absolutely. So we, um, you can visit www.otvacademy.com. Um, that's the website where you can, uh, you can take courses or you can sign up to be an instructor. Uh, to share your lived experience. We have a marketplace community model where it's cross marketing. So, and the great part about it is passive, right? You pre-record your courses, uh, you put it on the platform and you earn money while you sleep. So just imagine you have a $20 course and a thousand people are taking it all across the country, all across the world while you're sleeping. And then I, that rinses repeat every month. Exactly. And I love that it's uplifting the black community at the same time it's providing a service for the folks that are listening to it, their nuggets. It's good to, to instruct and teach people what you have learned, right? So right. you've made it this far, teach the people who are coming behind you, the ones that are just graduating college or vocational school, help them manage their finances or whatever. They need to navigate life after high school and things like that, especially for special needs kids. I think, you know, I work with tons of special needs children with learning disabilities, autism, dyslexia, things like that. And I used to work middle school setting. Now I do public and private. But a lot of them need a lot of mentorship and guidance and the parents need it. So I can see lots of other courses that would be very applicable to them just to help them navigate life post high school and even middle school, you know, and well, other you educators can, and so forth, you know? You can teach and learn any and everything from, I uh, got a guy putting together a program. He played uh, 11 years in Canada and two years in the NFL and he teaches defensive backs. Um, for you, think about the things that you didn't know going through your journey as a, a, a speech therapist, right? And if you had someone tell you this, how could your path change or your trajectory grow quicker? So all the things that you ever would think of, there's an opportunity not only to teach, but to learn. Yeah. And we value, like I said, lived experience. Yes, I think that's wonderful for, you know, knowledge is power. You know, we should always Absolutely. be learning, continuous learning. I think that's one of my success keys. I'm also writing a book too that I need to finish up. <laughs> Probably a little bit similar to yours, but in a different perspective, right? Awesome. Women's perspective. That's excellent. I really like the work that you're doing. As a parent of children, I know you have four children. What do you want speech language pathologists and educators to know about fostering successful school environments when teaching Black children? Because think, school environments vary depending on the county you live, it's the Title I school, but how can we better um, foster successful communities? I think for, you know, educators and folks that engage with students, period, it's to, to listen differently, right? Mm -hmm. To engage each child as an individual, as a unique, amazing being that's coming to their class that may have different backgrounds may have different abilities or challenges, but you look at them uniquely as they are and don't prejudge who they are because you, we all gonna learn from, from every person that you engage with, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and for our children, they need to feel safe in a space that is inviting for them to learn. Because once you make this space a, a, a situation where it's not a relationship versus Often we have professionals that say, you need me more than I need you. And that's not the case, right? 
Uh, you have a job to do, they have a job to do. The student has to learn, you have to teach, but it's a relationship. So build the relationship versus coming in with these predisposed notions. And I, I, I know our communities, our children, our future will be better. I think it's very important to know that each child is an individual. Every child learns differently, especially special education students and regular education students. Teachers, I know, have to differentiate instruction to their learning style. Kids may have strengths in math versus science. The kids that I work with struggle with listening comprehension, auditory memory, processing deficits, reading, decoding, all of those things. The things that I work with struggle with. But if you can really just get to know them and figure out how to teach them best with visual aids and different ways on Zoom now. <laughs> We're finding lots of things with technology now to better reach the students. I think you really hit it on the money there just to really make sure that we're tailoring to the individuality of each child and that can really help foster their success and to be nurturing, right? Building the relationships with the children. I, everybody that knows me and my business models, you, you show kids that you care and they will rise to the occasion. Absolutely. You know, make a connection with the family and they will rise to the occasion. The kids will make progress and they would love to come to speech language therapy. They will enjoy coming to school. If they don't enjoy their teacher, it's going to be hard for them to really focus and learn. You know, they have to be in a nurturing environment. They know that they're loved, yet there's discipline there so that they can grow up to be respectful human beings too and well-mannered and behaved. I definitely believe in a well-rounded child, right, in, in many avenues. But I think that is very important, the relationship building. And especially in COVID right now, you know, um, I engage a lot with the school system. And part of the things is I think people don't understand some of the social emotional needs that young people are having right now. One, they're not engaged with their peers, but two, many uh, because of economic constraints, they may be in a home with without Internet. Um, and you're like, well, why are you not showing up in class or turning your turn, turning your homework? They may be in a situation where mom and dad were struggling even before COVID hit. And now they're trying to figure out how to keep the lights on or just, oh, we'll pay this mortgage, but we don't have lights. So there's so many different challenges. So I think we need to be open and, and, and feel different, listen different uh, and approach, you know, engaging young people differently. Yes, I think just to be understanding and to listen, really listen, because kids tell you all sorts of things and you say, oh, okay. And then really take the time to listen to what the families have to say. I know here in Atlanta, many of the districts, which is wonderful, we've had funding through many of the districts, they have access to internet, even if it's a lower income school, Title I schools, many of the larger school districts provide the hotspots and internet providers. Right. Um, so I would say a good majority of the children in Atlanta throughout all the various counties have access to internet. I think they've worked really hard on that over the past couple of years. I mean, the past year, excuse me, since March, but there are, you know, times that it could be spotty and not the best. So, um, but there might be other variables. I know some of the other school districts also, food, right? Being hungry. If you're hungry, you cannot learn. And that's something I know a lot of the districts have also worked on where the kids can come and pick up meals and families, you know, safely outside. If they're at home doing virtual learning, they set up time that they can come. So I think the districts across the board in various states have tried to solve some of those issues. Because if you're, you're hungry, you cannot learn. If you do not right. have internet, or it's spotty. Or power. Exactly. Or true. power. All of those things. <laughs> so a lot of, yeah. and, and like, and to the point about the challenges that folks look at, you know, they say when, when America catches a cold, Black people catch the flu, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at these things, yes, we're, 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 we're making great strides. Um, unfortunately, in our communities, we have so many, so many challenges that were there and this was the tipping point right so yes you're providing the hot spots but if they didn't have power the hot spots won't do anything yes you provide meals but if you don't have transportation that is not doing anything um and then there's a sense of pride that goes in so again it's it's just listening differently into what you said listening to what's said and not said right. um and, and and i think that will help us to navigate through this especially through this COVID crisis yeah. which is why it's so important i serve kids publicly and privately because there's a need for it you know and, and all the different venues and like you said listening is very key you know so we, we continue to need all um hands on deck to solve these social issues too right but, you know a little at a time how can we foster increased collaboration between sectors such as nonprofit, business, education to attain more culturally responsive and successful communities? Because you know, you're from a business background, mindful education, but I think 
the dialogue is good because I think that, you know, we need the community support. So how can we foster greater collaboration across various sectors? You know, the biggest thing is, is be open to engaging, right? Um, I have a, a, a heart for service and volunteering. Um, I will work with more organizations than my own. We built on the vision not to reinvent the wheel, but be a, resources to, a resource to other organizations, to businesses, to other nonprofits too. Um, we're just a catalyst, right? So for the greater community is be open to engaging, be open to hearing the needs from a different perspective or vantage point than your own. Um, when you see boys selling water on the corner, understand that they're not just nuisances, they are trying to fend for a need. Oftentimes they have a situation where that money that they're bringing home is making sure that the household eats or the lights stay on because they're supporting, you know, helping to support the family in, in trying times. So be, be able to engage differently and show up, just show up and be willing to open your doors when folks show, do show up. Yeah, I think the um, involvement in the community is important. And knowing that just because you see somebody doing X, Y, and Z, you don't know their story behind why they're doing that. A lot of times our Black children, especially our Black boys, get um, put in the place, oh, they're just bad, or they're unruly, or they're defiant. And sometimes, maybe, but a lot of times, no. You have to get to know, right. to know what is the story behind that. And you know, Black people in this country have been through so many different things, through trauma, through all sorts of things, you know, and we have risen above it in many ways. And we're some of the most resilient people and bounce back. Right. <laughs> bounce back and come back stronger and stronger, you know, and there's, we can achieve so many different things, but it's important for the Black community and those in other communities, regardless of racial, ethnic backgrounds, to come together nonprofit, business, public, private education, speech therapists, technologists, counselors, everyone to come together to really uplift our communities, uplift the Black community uplift all the community here in Atlanta and beyond to really build a successful life for the children and adolescents in our communities and for the adults too. You know, during this COVID season and pandemic season, we all have to be safe and protect one another and just be wise and be vigilant and also um, continue to serve. I'm really big on service as well, beyond speech therapy. I serve in a variety of capacities, um, more so when it was non-COVID on off the Zoom, but <laughs> I still do a lot for my community um, through the years, which I think is very important, right? We're all multifaceted people. And I think it's important to just use your talents and gifts that you are given to really um, make an impact, right? Make an impact on others. I think it's very important. A absolutely. Um, you know, ser service is, is the key, right? If, we, if we're, Chick-fil-A has a great model when they teach it across the country. Um, they actually, I, I don't think people under, know that they get paid to do their servant leadership training. Um, but part of that in that model is, is, is service first, right? And they come with a servant heart. And if more of us understood that, um, that, that return on the investment for the community, for everyone we touch is just so great. Yeah. So serve, serve, serve your way to success. Yes, that's wonderful. Servant leadership, I think that's important. You can all have something of value to add to the society. That's wonderful. This has been a very good dialogue here, and I think maybe I have to invite you back to our panel when I do a panel discussion on different topics. I would love to. Because I know you're very big on equity, and so am I as equity in education. I'll be doing some um, series on that coming up soon, too. Awesome. I'm here to serve. <laughs> Just a little preview here, and I will definitely include a write-up, more information about yourself, Mr. Warner, on my website, and we will feature this um, on my YouTube. So it was wonderful having you here today. Any Thank other you so much thoughts? for inviting me. You're very welcome. Um, you know, this uh, one, serve your way to success, and if you're interested, if you have that you want to get paid for your passion while you sleep, visit us at otvacademy.com. That's otvacademy.com. Um, and, you know, we're here to help you to not only get paid from your lived experience, but to, to empower the world with what you bring to the table. Yes. And I love that. I'm all about a global society. Awesome. <laughs> so Thank you so much. All come together. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for joining.